Hey guys, Iggy back again with Dragon Blogger. So, if you've all seen my previous review, I did a review on the Rajentech Themis Evo, which was a great CPU heatsink. Unfortunately, the very last heatsink I reviewed, though, was the stock CPU heatsink in that review. So, since that review, I've left it on there. Obviously, not overclocked. As you saw in the previous review, the overclocked did not pass at all on that, duh. Today I am going to be doing a build for you guys using the Rajentech Tysis. So this is a big bad boy. It brings two fans, one of the things I wanted in the previous review. And uh, well, we'll get into that in a second. First off, I have to take the motherboard out. Now, the the case that I'm using here is the Thermal Tape Silencer F51. But, you know, it's got the little panel in the back that I can just remove the heatsink from there. You know, if, if there was a back plate for the Intel one, I could just take it out from here. Obviously, there isn't on the Intel, but the Rajentech Tysis does have one. I'm not going to be doing it through here though, because maybe your case doesn't have that. And I just want to show you how to do that. So let's get to it. So first thing I want to note is when you do a good job cabling everything and you have to take the board out, it's not much of a hassle. You know, you got to disconnect the stuff over here, disconnect this, disconnect this, just move it and you can take the board out. If you have cables going everywhere, that's a big pain. You got to move everything and then hold everything in place and take the board out. But again, if you cable nicely, not only does it give you plenty of room for air to go through things and cool things down, but it makes, you know, whenever you have to change the motherboard or upgrade or anything that much easier. So again, I'm going to take the motherboard out and we'll, we'll get started on that. Took the board out of the case. Here's the board. So now let's go ahead and take the Intel heatsink out. All right, so first off, we gotta take this one out first. We're gonna go ahead, just twist it to the left. Let's go ahead and take the memory out too. Okay, and then disconnect the cable and just pull these out a little bit. All right, and that should come off very quick and easy. Put, off, put that off to the side. And now we're going to want to clean off that thermal paste because the Rajentech does bring some Dow Corning thermal paste. So I'm just going to put a little alcohol, rubbing alcohol, on a paper towel and just wipe it off. Still some more on the other side, of course. All right, and then just take off any excess with another piece of paper towel. All right, and you're good. See, a little extra came off there. So we got it, we're good. We're going to have to take this guy out. I'll move the board to the side for a minute, just so you can see me taking this up. Now, one very cool thing this does bring, aside from the heating itself, it brings a little screwdriver, kind of Allen wrench screwdriver, which is great you know, your friend maybe doesn't know a lot about computers, but you do. And you're installing this for your friend, and they tell you, I have everything you're going to need. Just come over and help me. They don't have the most basic screwdriver, so this brings it. I'm not going to use that screwdriver because I can prepare it. I have my own. So we're just going to take this out. But it's great that they... That they include it. 
All right, so the first thing we were going to do is, we don't need this right now, though it looks so beautiful and it's huge. I mean, just for comparison's sake, here's the heat sink. And there's the Intel one. So, all right, so we're going to just separate all the brackets and braces and nuts and nipples, sounds kind of funny, but we're gonna separate everything. Um, obviously, we're gonna be using the Intel ones. This comes prepared for Intel and AMD, which is great. So I'm just gonna open this guy up. We're going to need this, these two. These are for putting the second fan on the back of the heat sink. Put this on the side. And here is the back plate for the heat sink. Here is the Here is the crossbar. This goes in between the two mounting clips. Here are the two Intel mounting clips. Here is the Dow Corning thermal paste, which is actually great. And the two AMD mounting clips. Since in this case we're not going to be using the AMD ones, we'll just put those aside for now. And now let's open up the, uh, the nuts and bolts and all that good stuff and the nipples. Here are the four plastic nuts and the two M3 screws. The eight rubber nipples, so maybe we don't actually need these guys, but we'll see in a minute. These are the anti-vibration rubber nipples. And the four LGA 2011 screws. Four metal nuts. And last but not least, the knurled threaded screws. All right, so let's get started to put that on the back of the board. All right, now that we've removed the thermal paste and the heat sink and the memory, just to give us a nice area to work with, we're gonna go ahead and flip the board over. So that we can put the back, back plate on. So we're just going to put it right over here. Then we're going to use one of the knurled threaded screws. And then you'll notice right over here, you notice those little ridges here? They kind of match these ridges here. So right when you pop it right in here, when you screw it in on the, on the other side, these are not going to spin around. So that's pretty nice. So first off, we're going to go ahead and put the first one in. Kind of matching up the holes, not perfectly, but just for now, temporarily. And then we just kind of move things in place and we'll fit the very first screw in there. Then we're just gonna put our thumb right over it so that it won't fall when we flip it over, maybe our finger, whichever. All right, and then we can see that right here. See that screw? All right, and then we're gonna use one of the plastic nuts to just slide right over here. Just kind of screw it into place. You don't want to screw it all the way in because everything's kind of going to be falling into place now when we put the other three screws in. So just kind of loose. We'll tighten it up a little bit more later on. All right, and now we can just let go, see? All right, and now we'll flip it back over. All right, you can see how that just moved a whole lot. So we'll put one over here now. All right, just fell into place, fell right in the hole. And again, just put your finger over it. And we'll grab another plastic nut. 
and just softly put it in there. Again, you don't want to tighten too much because everything's got to settle first. There you go. Flip it back over. We'll drop the other one right in there. All right, and last but not least, we'll go ahead and drop the final one here. And now that you have the other three in place, you can start tightening them all. Okay. And now this is where we need to pay attention to how we're going to be putting the heat sink in. You can put it like this so that the, there's a fan here and there's a fan here. They're either blowing or sucking air, whichever which way you want it, or you can put it like this. So whichever way you put it, you're going to have this bridge on the bottom. Okay, you see that bridge right over here? Okay, so the reason I showed you that, and I'll take this off for now, is now we're going to be putting these in place. These are the little Intel mounting clips. So either we're going to put them like this, Where the bridge would lay flat like this or we're going to lay it like this where the bridge would lay like this and again that would tell you how the heat sink would fit okay so let's see how am i going to put this i'm going to put it actually just like that okay and you know it all depends on how your case is cooled my case has air coming in from the front out through the back so to me this will be the perfect solution just like the way my case has it air is going to be coming through the CPU heatsink like that all right so these you're going to want to screw down with a screwdriver mind you, you can use it by hand at first actually sorry for these, it's better for the lip to go out. This little lip right here, see how you can put it this way or this way. You want it to go like that. So by hand first. So now we're going to want to apply the thermal paste, the Dow Corning. This is actually very good thermal paste. Uh, mind you, the only one, other one I've had to compare it with was Arctic Cooling MX2 and this one. And this one actually seems to be a few degrees cooler. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up. And just apply some right down here. All right, it's a little too much, but it's not horrible. All right, so let's go ahead and take this off. 
I definitely don't want to leave that on there. Look how shiny and reflective that is. Looks great. Nice and clean. And now we're going to want to grab this and just go ahead and slide it in between so that it's in its little grooves. You can see the grooves right in there. And that's where these guys sit into. All right, and we just layer down. All right, now here's the part that having a magnetized screwdriver tip really does help. So I'm going to put this down again. All right, and first I'll find the hole over here and I'll start the pilot screw in here. Not gonna go all the way just yet. Just the tip. <laughs> All right. And let me put this in place. All right, now that we've got that in there, now we can screw everything in place. It'll kind of fall into place because it has no choice. All right, so now as we saw before, we can at times run into a little spacing issue with the memory and the heat sink. So before we put the fan in place, let's go ahead and install all the RAM. Ah, it looks like it's already in the way. So what we're going to have to do is just take this guy out and then put the, heat, the uh, at least two sticks of RAM in place and then put it back in. So one sec. All right, so with the memory in place, we can see that this heat sink comes so close. And on the camera, it might look like it's hitting it, but you can see here, I'm putting a piece of paper. You know, there's space. And let me turn the board around. There's space. You know, there's right there. You know, can't be any fatter. And it can only be a little tiny bit taller. So if you have tall memory, you might have a bit of an issue. And what I'll do is I'll measure my memory for the review. It's a little bit taller than the actual PCB itself, but some of you I know have really tall RAM. So I'll go ahead and measure that for you and let you know just how tall your RAM can be. All right, so now we have to put the fans on here. So first off, you're going to need to know which way you want your air flowing. Again, in my case, the air comes from the front this way to the back. So here you can see that this is the rear of the board. So the there would be another fan right here, exhausting. Now, if you have this heat sink turned around facing this way so that coming in this way, you just want to make sure that your airflow is correct. So you're going to want to look at your fan that comes with the uh, the heatsink you can see here there's an hour an arrow pointing that way so airs going this way and that the the fins are spinning this way so just some handy information you should know so now I'm going to be fitting these nipples through here so that they can fit right in here give you a better view this way and because I've already put the heat sink in with the memory I can't put the ones on the bottom but they're kind of really not needed unless of course you're shipping this in which case you would want some foam inside your case and you would definitely want to use these guys but since I'm not I'm not going to worry about that 
So I'm only going to be putting these two on the top and again with the arrows pointing that way. So to get these little rubber nipples in here, first you slide it through here, then you just grab it and pull it. See how that comes in right there? Just so that you have a point of reference. See how that fits right in there? Pretty cool. Okay, so then let me go ahead and do the other side. All right, now that that's placed, All right, so it turns out in my situation, this heat sink is not going to work with the nipples, at least in the front. I'll show you why. So go sitting right on top of the ram like that. All right, you can see I have a lot of space up here. The hole is right here. And let me move it so you can see. And there's a lot of space between here and here. Now, mind you, I can have it loose and everything, but that's not the way we're going to want to have it, especially if we're going to ship this machine. Hey guys, so I've had to rethink my CPU heatsink strategy just a little tiny bit. So before, it used to be the holes were right here. Now, the holes like this. So that's going to mean my video card is going to be right here and my fan's going to be right here. I've done the measurement. It'll fit. I have a fourth of an inch space. I'm afraid that could cause a little noise, but we'll find out more, of course, when we're installed. So we can see here that the, the fins still are, are not touching the RAM. They're very close, but they're not touching the RAM. See, we can fit paper right in between there, and maybe we can fit this is about, you know, six sheets thick. You can probably fit about four more sheets, but, you know, it, it will be a tight fit. You can see a little more right there. So it's not horrible. So the way that this is going to work is imagine this being the very top of my case. So the ceiling of the case is right here. The two fans I have in my Thermaltake Suppressor F51 are exhausting, so the air is going this way. So that actually makes things pretty good. There's going to be one fan right up here, sucking air this way, another fan in here, push-pulling fan this way, and then up here is going to be sucking air. And I have two, two fans sucking air out, so it might actually work pretty well, of course, my benchmarks will tell me a little bit more. Of course, I'm going to do some thermals. So let's go ahead and install the very first fan. So right off the bat, you can see here, the arrow's pointing this way, meaning air is going this way, and the blades are spinning this way. So I'm going to turn it around this way and put it like this. So another thing about placing the fans just like this, or the heat sinks, is right back here is going to be another exhaust. So air is going to be exhausting this way. Whatever these two fans up here cannot exhaust, it's just going to, you know, kind of do this and then get sucked out that way. So, and then it's going to be blowing possibly some air over here, but not much, and it will be cool air. So that is pretty nice. So let's go ahead and install this fan. Now that we have a lot more room, we can actually hit the ones on the bottom and the top. These little holes right here, let me bring it closer. These little holes right here, for these little anti-vibration rubber nipples, we can just slide them once the heat sink is in place. I'm sorry, the fan is in place. And that's going to hold it in place. And it actually does a pretty good job. So I'm just going to... Fill in all the holes. You just put in the anti-vibration rubber nipple right in this hole here. And then just grab it over here. And pull on it. Alright, so what that does, it kind of locks it in place. You might be able to tell from this one how that works. So this piece slides through. And then it falls right in here. 
you can't pull any more because then you have this little wall here. So I just wanted to show you how that works. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for all four holes. So I probably should have done it beforehand. So I'm just going to leave the bottom ones out, which is fine. Now, if I were shipping it, I would want to put all four. So for now, I'm just not going to. I'm just going to use the top ones and slide it down in here. And I'll do the same on this one. All right, easy enough. And now I'm going to put the one on in the middle. This one, like before, we're gonna to wanna to put it, you know, the air's going this way and the fans are spinning this way. So we're going to want to put it just like this. And I am going to use the top rubber nipples. So I'll just go ahead and install those now. Now you can see how this works. Now we're going to want to turn this guy around and focus on one very important thing. The CPU fan headers. So there's CPU optional and their CPU fan. So this will be the very first one. All right, so we put the first one down here and we put the second one down here. All right, there you go. So not all boards are gonna have a CPU optional. They will all have the CPU fan, which of course will be your main one. So what you're gonna to want to do in the case that you don't have a second one, you just find another one like a chassis fan and just make sure you have that at a very you know at a decent level where it's going to cool everything nicely so at this point now we're just going to go ahead and install this bad boy inside the system and i'll go ahead and do this offline and uh, come back to you when it's back in all right guys so here is the computer or the entire case with the Rajantech Tysis, it's been a bit, a bit of a mission. Now the way that this is right now should work very well. The bottom portion is not going to suck in as much air as you would like it to because of the PCIe card. I just kind of want to show you how you know it's going to work. Um, I may move it down later on during the review, but my initial benchmark results will be with this video card right here. So let's just see how well this works. All right, Iggy with Dragon Blogger out. See you guys.